Aside from their efficient admin and communication skills, they are very supportive on a professional level, but at the same time, you can feel that personal touch. Uh, they care about you, not because that's what they do, but because it's who they are. And I think that's a rare quality that you can find in consultancy and feel people really important to you. Actually, I already did. I mean, I'm going to something so good, right? If you're looking for a strong support system and very excellent in admin skills, then Canada is the right education consultancy for you. Kumusta naman yung experience nyo with Kanata Education, siyempre? Tinulungan mo pa, alam mo. Oo, alam mo. In all honesty, sobrang laki yung tulad sa amin ng Kanata kasi step by step yung pagtulong nila. Ramdam mo talaga yung genuine concern and support nila. Hindi na sila yung agent nila basta makakuha ng pera or makapagpasa lang or ma-check lang ng document, sila, sorry sila ma-check ng document. Makulit, makulit sila ma-check. Makulit sila, matay sila, they see to it that everything is in order before they launch na visa application. So, alam mo yun, hindi lang yung feeling na, hindi lang yung feeling na, ano, may trust ka, pero feeling mo rin, panagad ka sa application na, kasi alam mo na, na-check na maayos, at talaga na, pinag-aanan ng oras ng document. Okay. Uh, well, 
experience uh, in hours in the this future. And that is stretching stretch my mind and knowledge. Kumusta naman yung experience nyo with Kanata Education, siyempre? Tinulungan mo ka. Oo, oh, alam mo. Uh, in all honesty, sobrang laki na tuloy sa amin ng Kanata kasi um, step by step, yung pagtulong nila, ramdam mo talaga yung genuine concern and support nila. Kung nila sila yung agency na basta um, makakuha ng pera or um, makapagpasa lang or ma-check lang ng documents sila. Toro sila ma-check ng documents. Makulit. Makulit sila ma-check. Makulit sila. Matay sila. They see to it that everything is in order before they launch the uh, visa application. So, alam mo, hindi na lang yung feeling ng uh, hindi na yung feeling ng uh, may trust ka. Pero feeling mo rin panata ko sa application hmm. kasi alam mo na na-check na maayos at talaga na pinag-aanan ng oras hmm. ng documents. Hmm. All right, thank you and hello and good evening. Welcome to Hanata Educational Consultancy Services free webinar with College of New Caledonia and Northern Lights College. So, um, kumusta naman po sila? Uh, we hope that you're okay. You and your family are safe, especially right now since the weather is just really kind of uh, getting crazy. Uh, we get so much sun in the morning and then pag sa gabi, biglang buhos yung ulan. So I hope everyone is doing fine. Um, right now, we will have two speakers. Um, we'll have Sir Jello Concepcion from College of New Caledonia, and we have Miss Jamie Roja from Northern Lights College. Now, I know that some of you have already spoken to them um, either through email or directly through phone call. Um, if you have questions, don't worry because we will have our question and answer portion right after. We will also have Ms. Catherine Manasan to discuss the services uh, that Kanata Educational Consultancy is offering. So right now, we will have our first speaker, Sir Jello Concepcion from College of New Caledonia. So I'm very excited because some of you have actually chosen CNC as your school of choice. So here you go, Sir Jello. Uh, hello. Hi, Sir Jello. How are uh, you? I'm doing good. Is my audio clear? Hindi naman naririnig ang electric pan. <laughs> yes. Okay, no pan po. Okay, good, good. Init eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, so, I'm, 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 I can start now, right? Yes po. Go All ahead, right, so, Sir Jello. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So, anyway. Okay. Uh, I'll share my screen and good evening, everyone. Um, I know you're having your dinner. So, uh, just sit back, enjoy, and don't mind me. And uh, hopefully you can just listen to our presentation. 
Uh, welcome to Kanata and uh, Team North British Columbia special presentation for study in Canada. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, Kanata. And uh, special mention to my colleague, Jamie. I missed uh, doing these webinars with you. And again, welcome everyone. Let's begin. All right, my school, basically it's located also in North BC, but the specific province, it's Prince George. Okay, my school is College of New Caledonia or CNC. I actually see some familiar names in the crowd and uh, I'll be, I'm happy to be working with, to be seeing you here and hopefully everything's going well. All right, so in a nutshell on what you see in your screen right now, um, if you are quite uncertain on where to begin your journey in Canada, I hope you would consider studying at CNC because it is the best place or best school to jumpstart your journey in Canada. Either if you are budget conscious or if you are looking for a destination with good salary or you're the type of applicant, you know, you're, you just want to begin. You know, you're tired of the Philippines, you want something better, you want a secure life and you just need to start somewhere or you're the applicant whose end goal is eventually to bring your family to Canada, then again, CNC at Prince George is the best place to jumpstart that journey. All right, there you go. We are empowering. We are the stepping stone and a leg up to something greater. We offer an essential foundation of skills and knowledge, always striving to be relevant in a changing workforce. We welcome and shape learners of all kinds. Access and support come naturally. We are connective. We are the bridge, the branches that extend between graduates and employers. We intersect ideas and action, bringing practical application to the concepts we teach. We are grounded. We remain deeply rooted in our region. We build relationships on a one-to-one -one basis and take community needs to heart. We listen to those around us and respond in a proactive way. Our sense of place gives us perspective. We are dynamic. We shift and evolve as the world changes around us. We adapt our modes of delivery, introducing new ways to learn and connect. We are a force for change providing direction and impact from the individual to the community and beyond. We are CNC. We are CNC and we are still tagged as the best low cost, high return study destination in Canada. Low cost, ibig pong sabihin ay mura. High return, ibig pong sabihin malaki ang balik sa inyong study investment. And uh, as of 2021, we are one of the fastest growing school or preferred school for Filipinos going to Canada. So you can see in the screen here, here are some of our students. We have a uh, single applicants and also applicants who are bringing their families. Now let's proceed in discussing briefly our province, Prince George. Now you may be thinking, where is Prince George? As you can see on your screen, this is the map of British Columbia. And um, imagine if British Columbia is the whole Philippines. If Vancouver is Metro Manila, Prince George can be described as the Baguio City of BC region. It is a province, yes, but we have an economy to back up any opportunities that you may need in your journey to Canada. We are the perfect combination of urban and nature in one. Weather in Prince George is quite perfect, almost same as uh, Baguio City. So some would describe our weather as like sunny cool with 1900 hours of sunshine every year. Now, what are the things to do in Prince George? A lot of things, again, urban in nature. So whatever you wanna see from the big urban city, you can find it in Prince George, like Starbucks, Timmy's, malls, we have that for you. At the same time, you can just go 15 minutes away and go hiking or go fishing, something like that. So it's perfect, perfect combination, whatever your mood is. Now, are there Filipinos in Prince George? Quick answer to that is yes. There's a fast growing minority population of Filipinos there as of the moment. 2% of the population are Filipinos with, uh, I would say 60% students or international students from CNC. Then the remaining 40% are Filipinos 
who came from different major cities or provinces who decided to relocate to Prince George. So sa tingin nyo, bakit kaya from other cities lumipat pa sila ng Prince George? Going back again to what I'm emphasizing, it's low cost. So mura po talaga siya. Um, at the screen you can see here, if you are planning to buy your own property or house, comparing major city prices versus Prince George, the price is 50-60% less. All right? So mas madali po mag-start ng buhay if you begin your journey in our province. Prince George's is also currently the third best place to live in, Britain, uh, in BC due to the low price on real estate and the regular cost of living. Economy in Prince George. Um, Sigurat sagutin natin ang tanong, ano, what kinds of job are available in PG right now? The quick answer to that is almost everything. If you are into business, IT, health, engineering, tourism, human resources, we have it. But maybe not aviation. Um, Nor Northern Lights have that one, right? So we have a lot of opportunities for you if you want to check it out. Uh, but this is just to show you what industries are top in Prince George right now. So the top three industries are forestry, healthcare and medical sciences, and then tourism. How do you go around in Prince George? So a lot of students have been asking me about this. And uh, of course, if you are a student of CNC, your bus ride is free. Uh, this is a sample of an ID and a sticker. Though I should have covered her name, but don't worry, she's fine. She's a good student. And uh, for most of our students, after one year of staying, they would usually buy their own cars. This is just to show you how affordable the place is. So they buy their own car, usually from this guy, the friendly Filipino guy in PG, Mr. Art Alido. This is not an endorsement. This is just to show you that this guy is an OWP of a student at CNC. He's currently a uh, leading salesperson from Wood Witten Super Center. Right, so if, you, if uh, you can buy your own car in PG, as you can see, some of our students have really been occupying top jobs in the province. In a nutshell, in Prince George, you earn more and you save more. Imagine this, you have the salary of Metro Manila, but the cost of living is like you are in a low cost region. Low cost, high return, and that is Prince George for you. Prince George is a wonderful place to raise a family. Absolutely. Prince George is everything that you'd want in a city. Prince George is home. It's more of a home to me than I've had in the place I grew up in. When I first came out here in 2002, everybody where I worked was like, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You got somewhere to go? You're coming to my place. I must have had six invitations. Everybody takes care of everyone here, and I find that to be a really an original trait for the places that I've lived in. I haven't found this anywhere else. There is something about Prince George that has always amazed me, and I don't know how these people do it time and time again. And they keep supporting, and so they're constantly supporting the community they live in because they believe in it too. It's been amazing. You know, like uh, we moved a 16 year old girl halfway through high school, and that's probably not the easiest thing to do when you're coming from a you know, a greater metropolitan area into a smaller a smaller city, but it's been great. And once again, the people and her friends here are as close as the friends she's ever had. I think the biggest thing has been the big sky sunsets and just how much sunshine. You know, any place where you have to wear sunglasses 12 months a year is a great place to live. You know, the, the biggest advantage or change for me in my business life is the commute time from home to my office. You know, I, I live quite rural by Prince George standards, but ultimately I'm 15 minutes door to door between my home and my office. And that used to be an hour and a half commute. So the reality is, you know, sometimes it's, it's you know, it's taking care of the property. It's, it's, it's going to my daughter's volleyball games. You know, lots of different things that I would have probably missed had I been in the city. I love the fact that commute times are a lot less than in major cities. The fact that I can leave my house at 8, 15 and be at work at 8, 22. It's, it's great. So that's that's a great thing and allows me a lot more t a lot more free time to be outside and be active and play hockey or go once golf season comes, go golfing and do all sorts of stuff like that. And the best part about living in Prince George is lots of outdoor activities. This, the fact that there's no rain or hardly any rain and I like the snow as well. And there is tons of sun. PG has most of the amenities that a major city will have, which is great. Spending most of my life in major cities, I like to have the ability to go out for a nice meal every once in a while and go to a mall and get, get all the things that I need. I love Prince George. I never thought I would be what people would call a small town girl, but Prince George is not small, first off. And there's so many activities that you can do that you cannot do in the big city. You cannot drive 20 minutes 
and go snowboarding. You can go around the corner and go fishing. So I originally wanted to go to medical school. I applied to multiple places, including Simon Fraser University, University of Toronto, uh, University of Western Ontario. I chose the NBC because it is extremely well known in the science division. Going through your university education, you're not rich, you're not driving a nice sports car, you're not rocking the Gucci bags. So you do consider the price of the school. Prince George is a great opportunity for young adults to start their lives. Prince George is an amazing place uh, to raise a family, an amazing place to, to visit, and certainly to work. Prince George is active. Prince George is home. Prince George is home. Now how to begin and how, uh, that will be how to study at CNC. We are a public school. We've been in Prince George for 50 years right now, 5-0. And for a public school, all our programs are PGWP um, connected. So uh, once you study, you will be able to study uh, to work after the program. Our intakes are every January, May, and September, three times a year. So uh, take note, we just call January spring. I know it's winter. We just like to call it spring. So uh, about, yeah, January, May, and September. Um, as of now, our seats for January, I think, are almost full, but uh, we are opening our intake for May this coming uh, end of September, right? So uh, end of September to first week of October, the online portal for CNC will open for May, but we can accept applications as early as now. Um, our tuition fee, affordable by up to 40%, as low as 9000 Canadian per year. All our courses are no IELTS, tuition deposit. It's 6,500 or 10,000, depending on the equivalent duration that you want to pay. Next payment will be done after one semester or after one year. Process, I'll just skip this one. Kanata knows what they're doing very much. They're very, very good at it. So if you wish to inquire, just check them out and they will be telling you what documents to prepare. But mind you, to set your expectation, uh, admittedly, it takes us some time to process some of the documents. Um, ideally, we are working on a maximum of one month, but uh, sometimes it can take a bit longer. So uh, just set that expectation. If you'll be applying to us, you will be uh, needing some patience, but rest assured, uh, it's gonna be all worth it once you begin your study journey. All right, skip that one. Let's proceed to our courses. If ever you'll be checking our website, not all the courses offered there are for international students. So to get the full list, inquire with Kanata as soon as possible. We have programs under business and management. So uh, under that uh, programs, we have accounting, business management diploma with five specializations and our top two sell best selling courses, the post diploma in human resource management and the post diploma in tourism and hotel management. Again, uh, all of this program, no IELTS and two years duration. We also have programs under health sciences and human services, um, the dental assisting certificate, early childhood. Healthcare as of the moment is not offered um, until further notice. Um, the governing body is uh, asking us not to offer it for, to, not, not to offer this for international students for the meantime. But just in case you can still consider other programs like practical nurse, or social service worker diploma. We also have programs under tech, uh, computer certificate or post diploma in IT. Also under trades, I'm still looking for my first ever trade student. Um, I know in the Philippines, we see these trade programs as a uh, low paying, but trust me in Canada, these are very, very good. So I hope if you can uh, connect your program or get assessed, do consider trades. It's a very, very good career. Also, professional cook certificate. There you go. We also have, also have a program that can uh, connect you to university pathways. All right. Quick run through of our facilities. All right. We have a slide. That's just a Photoshop. But I hope, I think they're, they're really planning to have one very, very soon. All right. Um, whatever you need at a campus or college, we have everything for you. College stores, laboratory. We even have our own restaurant where in our professional cook students are practicing their craft. Okay. But if you want to see a full virtual tour of CNC and Prince George, do check out my YouTube account. I have a compilation of videos there of CNC and Prince George itself. Okay. 
How much does it cost to stay in Prince George? Quite affordable. Pictures here, as you can see, quite messy. This is the latest image of one of my students in Prince George right now. Um, he's, he's staying there uh, just last month. Okay. So he got this room for only 350 Canadian dollars, including the utilities. Um, this room can accommodate up to two persons. Usually for a family of three, 500 Canadian is the ideal price. We also have on-campus accommodations, but usually it's uh, more expensive versus off-campus. All right, this is our on-campus place. Off-campus, you can just check it out at Google and we have a Filipino community that's very active in endorsing places. As of the moment, we're not suggesting homestays due to the COVID um, concerns. So uh, this is not supported as of the moment by CNC. All right, just a quick run through. Again, this is just emphasizing how affordable, basically North BC, right? North BC is quite affordable. So if you're looking for a good place to study and start your career, check it out. I did mention again how affordable BC and how good the salary in Prince George is. Um, because for North BC, for the whole British Columbia, we have the same salary, basically. But you're paying a lower um, cost of living if you choose North BC or Prince George itself. All right. Um, just uh, skip this one. But again, uh, British Columbia, we have the second to the highest minimum wage in the whole Canada. So what do you think, right? Now, are there jobs in Prince George? A lot of people have been asking me that. This is the answer. Um, we have our group for people who have already um, received their LOO. Some people are asking, are there jobs? And our current students are applying of the opportunities in Prince George as of the moment. So if you, are, if you want to be part of the, I would say maybe not really pioneer, but a few of the growing Filipino communities, this is a good time for you. All right, student services, we have everything that you need. Emphasis on the student union or union, okay? We have that which protects your rights from transitioning to student visa to PGWP and how to find part-time jobs. We do assist you in giving you tips mainly, okay? And of course, I'm brandishing later on, I'll be modeling my own CNC jacket, okay? If you choose to study at CNC, you'll be receiving one of our merchandise just to give you that feel of the CNC family. So regardless of your um, decision or plan on why you wanna study abroad, I hope you would consider studying at CNC, all right, or North BC itself, okay? Studying in our province is very, very much worth every penny. Still low cost, high return. See you and thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Jello, for that very wonderful and detailed um, presentation for College of New Caledonia. So um, I know that some of the attendees here are already eyeing CNC as their school of choice. So I hope na yung presentation ni Sir Jello um, have answered your questions or your doubts. So um, I'm pretty excited for you to go to CNC. Now, our next speaker is Miss Jamie Rojo, another wonderful um, school in Northern British Columbia, who's also a um, choice for the majority of us here. And uh, let's all welcome Miss Jamie so that she can introduce and she can also talk about um, uh, Northern Lights College. Hello, Miss Jamie. 
Hi, Christina. Hello, everyone. Um, and for the rest of your team, Kanata, for um, hosting this event. And of course, to Angelo, my colleague here, who just did the presentation for CNC. So I'm Jamie Rojo. I'm the representative of Northern Lights College for Southeast Asia. Before I start my presentation, I would like to quickly introduce um, the assistant representative for Philippines, um, Nash Dalimpines. Because, you know, a majority of the increase are directed to him from the Philippine market, because I'm also handling the other countries in Southeast Asia. So it, he's here, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just so you know, just so it, you might, uh, you know, be confused that someone else was answering your inquiry or if you, you know, if you have been in communication with us. So that's the reason. That's that's who Nash is. But anyway, I'm gonna do my presentation. Let me quickly share my PowerPoint. And start. Okay. So again, I'm Jamie. Um, I work for Northern Lights College. I'm based in the Philippines. Uh Filipina din po ako. <laughs> um and I'm basically here to discuss or talk about the Northern Lights College. So as you can see in my background video here is the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. We are named after the Northern Lights because you can actually experience that when you go and study in, in our region, in our college. Uh, normally, we don't associate Northern Lights in Canada. I mean, for me, at least, uh, personally speaking, before, I wouldn't think of Northern Lights if I think of Canada. Um, all the while, I thought um, it's, you know, you can only experience it in Europe. But hey, uh, the Northern Lights is in the Northern Hemisphere, so it makes sense, right? So yeah, um, if you're interested, do you know, take it off of your bucket list, then perhaps come and study with us. We're located in the province of British Columbia, specifically in this the Peace region in the cities of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. So from Vancouver, to give you an idea where we are exactly located, from Vancouver International Airport, where you will most likely arrive, um, you have to book another domestic flight to either Dawson Creek or Fort St. John. These two cities that we, that where our two of, where two of our campuses are also located, and actually um, they, all, they have their own airport. So whichever your campus is, make sure that you can book your domestic flight, okay? Another, that's another one and a half hours um, flight from Vancouver. So um, you're going to the north, northern part of British Columbia. Actually, kapit bahay namin si Prince George, uh, four hours away from us is where Angelo's um, college is located. So we're both in the um, north BC. I would also like to um, give you an additional information about the opportunity for permanent residency if you come and study and stay in our region. Or yeah, if, if you stay after studying and apply under provincial nominee, which is uh, one of the options for permanent residency. Um, British Columbia has it, so you, know, you can apply for that. Um, you can actually get additional points just by just just by doing nothing, just by staying in the region after studying. Um, and it's important because not all um, regions in uh, British Columbia has equivalent points. For example, the greater Vancouver area actually has zero points under this category. However, Peace region actually has um, six points, which is higher than IELTS, by the way. So that uh, so there you, uh, another reason why a lot of international students, including the Philippines, are considering NLC or our region at least as their destination in Canada. Um, here's the quick video of the city of Fort Saint John, just so you can see. Hopefully, it will work. This the last time I did a presentation, it wasn't working.
Uh, I was just told that there's no audio. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I hope someone interrupted me. Anyway, um, that's fine. The entire purpose of the video, let me check. The entire purpose of the video is um, to show you what our city looks like. Uh, and I guess, visually speaking, you, you know, experience that. Um, if you're chatting me, I'm not checking the chat messages. I'm so sorry about not noticing that there's no audio. But anyway, uh, moving on. We're a public college in Canada, um, meaning our programs are postgraduate work permit eligible. It's important that you understand that because not all, not, not all institutions in Canada are eligible for that. Uh, so you have to be careful, okay? But you're safe for as long as you choose a public college in Canada. Um, we have five campuses in total covering about 324,000 square kilometers. To give you an idea how massive the land area of this region is, it's actually almost the same size as the Philippines. Actually, a little, a little bigger than the Philippines. Um, the figure below the 300,000 square kilometers is actually the land area of the Philippines. So as you can see, when I mentioned that we have five campuses, technically speaking, it's scattered in, in a land area that is as big as the Philippines. So structurally speaking, our colleges are not that big per campus because um, we are strategically located in different parts of the region, okay? However, the, um, the campuses in Dawson Creek and Fort St. John are two of our biggest. Dawson Creek is where our uh, main campus is located. Fort St. John, how, uh, on the other hand, is the biggest city in the region. Um, and I have a separate slide for the programs that we offer, but we have a variety of options that you can choose from. We also have a very supportive environment. As a matter of fact, we have a very active Filipino community in the region. And the Filipinos that we have in the region are not just the students that we currently have on campus. But actually, um, Filipino Canadians who move in our region from elsewhere because they realize the potential of our region, of our cities, and um, the opportunities that um, the region offers. So we will discuss those opportunities and potentials later on. Our Dawson Creek campus is a center of excellence for aerospace and clean energy technology. Under aerospace, we have a program called Aircraft Maintenance Technician. It's open to all international students. So you might want to consider that because um, NLC is the only college uh, in the North BC that's offering that program. Um, also, the clean energy technology is one of the fastest growing um, businesses and um, industry, not just in our region, but actually the entire of North BC. Um, if you have time, you can look up liquefied natural gas or LNG project. Uh, it's happening in the North BC and the liquefied natural gas can, can actually be found in Dawson Creek. Um, yeah, because the whole of Canada is transitioning to being eco-friendly. So instead of, you know, harmful fossil fuel, um, Canada is trying to uh, transition to clean energy. Next, these are the usual common questions that you guys um, collect or gather when trying to decide which institution possibly fit your, whatever you're looking for in a college. So I'm going to be discussing about it. Um, fees, of course, the money matters, how much uh, it will cost you, not just the tuition fee, but also the cost of living, job opportunity, um, climates and season, and program requirements. First off, our tuition fee. I am happy to inform you that Northern Lights College still offers the lowest tuition fee in British Columbia, and one of the lowest, actually, in Canada. Um, I've seen a lot of um, video on YouTube ranking the institution, public institutions in Canada that offers affordable tuition fee. And NLC always fall in either uh, top three or 
top five in the whole of Canada. So um, that's how affordable our tuition fee is. Um, to give you an idea of the usual tuition fee in Canada, especially for a public college, because public colleges are um, much more expensive than private institution. Normally it ranges from 16,000 to 20,000 Canadian dollar a year. So as you can see, the difference is around 5,000 or even twice or even you know half of the one-year tuition fee for other institutions is our one-year tuition fee. Um, and we're talking about per year. Uh, that means uh, that's good for two semesters already. So meron kayong dalawang option to pay the tuition, either pay the whole one-year tuition fee if you are financially capable to do that. If not, then we only require 6,000 Canadian dollar initial tuition deposit. That also covers your first semester, okay? So regardless, kung mag one year kayo ng full payment or mag-down payment lang kayo ng first semester, $6,000, you're still gonna get your letter of acceptance, okay? Accommodation, we have on-campus, off-campus, and another one homestay, which I did not include here. The homestay accommodation is the most expensive. And normally, um, hindi siya masyadong option for Filipinos. Normally, homestay are done by international student who needs to practice their English or, or uh, English program or English language program. For Filipinos, normally, we go for on-campus or off-campus accommodation. In uh, my personal recommendation, I would suggest you go for the on-campus accommodation muna. It will cost you $520 a month. It's a four-bedroom unit. Apat na studyante ang magka-share sa isang unit. Each student gets their own room. So yung mga rooms po, uh, isang per student po yun. So wala kayong pa-share. So you have your own privacy. Um, $520 includes your utilities such as water, internet, and electricity. You know, yun, all in yung $520. Food lang ang hindi kasama, but there's kitchen in the on-campus accommodation so you can actually cook your own food. Um, normally, I would recommend that because uh, arranging the on-campus accommodation is easier. It's under the... Um, the you just apply to the college and college din na nag-handle ng on-campus accommodation. Off-campus, on the other hand, Pwede nyo rin siyang i-consider right away, pero um, um, you have to rely on uh, the residents na nandun na. Anyway, kung ganyan yung gusto niyong gawin, marami ng mga Filipino na nasa dito. We, we actually have a group chat or Facebook group. Maybe some of you are already there. And Maureen, I'll, I'll introduce Maureen later on, has also a separate um, page na sinasagot niyo mga questions about accommodation and what that. Minsan may mga posting din siya doon ng mga available accommodation. Um, and what normally students do is on campus for say two months and then after that they move out and um, saka sila naghahanap ng off-campus accommodation. Kasi by then, when adjusted ka na in two months time, may na-meet ka na rin mga ibang international student, especially if you're going solo. And then you can, you know, um, find someone who can be your roommate and then you can share expenses, which will um, which will uh, lessen your expenses. Okay, so, yeah. Moving on, ha, na mentioned ito ni Jello kanina, but BC minimum wage is uh, the second highest in the whole of Canada. We're only next to Nunavut. Um, this was uh, effective June 1st. Just to give you a quick computation, $15.20 times 20 hours a week is your students are allowed to work 20 hours a week. Hindi pa kasama dyan yung, ano, ah, yung on-campus kasi may mga available jobs on campus and if you're able to secure that, um, that's additional working hours. So extra earning on top of the 20 hours per week. Okay, kasi yung 20 hours per week, ano yun, off-campus yun. So you will earn $304 a week if you multiply that to four weeks in a month, you uh, can earn a $1,200. Um, eh, pagka bakasyon, pwede kayo mag-work full time. So meaning 40 hours per week minimum. <laughs> Limited working hours yan, technically speaking. Basta bakasyon, summer, sem break, holidays. Pwede kayo mag-work ng full time. So twice yung magiging earning ninyo. And 
normally in our region, kung tatanungin niyo ako ng or all in um living cost in a month, siguro mga $800, $700 to $800 to, for you to comfortably um live in our region. Um kasama na doon yung food, um insurance, transportation, um uh, uh yung mobile plans ninyo, basta lahat-lahat ng mga $800, ganyan. So you can see, if you're paying or it's, it's spending $800 of cost of living in a month and earning $1,200, you, you know, may savings pa. Kahit pa paano. So, just to give you an idea of how how affordable the cost of living, not just in our region, but actually in the North British Columbia. Here is a video. This time, I'll make sure there's a sound. <laughs> um, a, a testimony. Of, uh, we featured one Filipino student, Meereen, um, to tell you how satisfied they are um, with the college. I hope there's an audio this time. Taking the risk come to Canada is something that is totally worth it. It's worth it because it's a country that is opening the doors for international persons. It's given opportunities and it's a country that is always going to recognize the respect for the other. My name is Carolina Rangel and I am from Colombia. I came to Dawson Creek in 2018. I'm Irene de la Peña Tassico. I came from the Philippines. I arrived here last September 2019. So I've been here for six months. And as for my experience, I'm really happy. Very gratefully happy. And I still can't believe that I'm here in Canada. I love this college. I love my instructors. They are always willing to listen, to respond to your doubts. and to help you, to provide you all the information that, that can help you make the learning process easier. So since I came here, I think the best part is the people. The people in here were so friendly, they're so accommodating, and they helped me to become a better person. It's something different. It's, it's a city that offers you a connection with the nature. And it, it's beautiful. And there's lakes. There's this um, sunsets and sunrises. Okay, it was that told are, that my audio is static, so I'm not sure why. But actually, it happened in my previous presentation. Um. Anyway, I'm just gonna. Um. If you want the, this, uh, how to stop this. Um, if you want the link for this, I can send it in the chat box later on. So you can um, watch it yourself. It's available on uh, Northern Lights College um, YouTube channel. My ring here where, where I post, just to give you an idea, is uh, re she recently graduated um, last May or June, if I'm not mistaken. And she was hired by the college as a student support. So right now, um, nag-work na rin siya sa NLC. Nandun siya ngayon. Uh, and you'll meet her kasi siya yung nag assist sa mga student na dadating or parating. Um, just to give you an idea of how um, the, the opportunity that is available in our region. Even if you go to the Facebook page ng NLC, may job posting doon because the college needs staff. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. I apologize about my audio. I'm not sure why, but I guess there's no sense I'm continuing in this um, video. So I'm just going to post the link later on. Moving on, job opportunity. I mentioned ko na kanina yung opportunity. Um, sa college pa lang, meron na. Pero to give you a better idea, I included here a screenshot. Uh, plus the website, workbc.ca. It's a busy labor market outlook, specifically in Northeast of British Columbia, where NLC is located. For the next 10 years, um, composition of job opening. So it says here, 47% will be coming from retiring workers. And Canada is an aging country. So um, it's expected that a lot of Canadians will be retiring in the incoming years. 
Uh, that's why uh, we badly need people, including international students who will ultimately become migrants, because you know, you know, yung plan talaga. Uh, and then on top of that, 53% will be coming from uh, new jobs due to economic growth. And I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, things happening in North BC. Uh, one of them is the liquefied natural gas project. Uh, in total, there is going to be 18,000 um, job opening for the next 10 years. 18,000 may sound small if we're talking about the Philippines, but for Canada, that's actually a huge number, especially in our region. Um, another thing is our unemployment rate is very low, meaning almost everyone in the region has jobs. So yung mga mag-fill in itong mga 18,000 available jobs in, throughout the year, um, throughout the years, rather, is will be coming from people na parating pa lang. Okay? Uh, yung mga international student, kagaya ninyo, na eventually will work kasi may postgraduate work permit na available. And then if you're, you know, able to secure your permanent resident, then you can stay for good. Now, four season. Canada is four season. Uh, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Um, winter is the most challenging, but you'll be fine. Um, Maka survive naman kaya Negative fifteen during uh, the average temperature during the winter season. During the peak season, though, it could reach up to negative thirty. But that's fine because um, you just have to be properly clothed, especially when you're going outdoors. Okay. Kasi syempre, logically speaking, hindi pwedeng lumabas na hindi naka-winter clothes kapag winter. So as long as you do, as long as you wear proper clothing during the winter, you can actually go and do some winter sports so like skiing, sledding, snowshoeing, stuff like that. But the rest of the season is okay. Um, tolerable na siya. Summer, uh, spring, and fall. Yung winter lang. But there's a lot of Filipino in our region. And they're fine. They're doing fine. Kasi lahat ng indoors naman, like the campus, your accommodation, your workplace, even the car may mga heaters and uh, warmers yan. So, you know, you won't miss out on, on winter. So if you want to experience that, go, come to us. Um, we move on to technicalities. So for IELTS, one of the requirements for international students normally is the English proficiency being Philippines, the second language natin is English. Um, but for NLC, we have IELTS waiver for all Filipino, exclusive po siya sa mga Filipinos. Ha? If we have a, an attendee here who's not a Philippine passport holder, unfortunately, this one is not applicable to you. So for all Philippine passport holder, if you're a graduate of four years bachelor's degree, you don't need to submit an IELTS exam anymore. Um, however, that also means if you're not a degree holder, kailangan mo magsend ng IELTS or any other English proficiency exam like PTE, for example, or Pearson Test of English and TOEFL. Duolingo is not acceptable. Um, it's not accepted by NLC from the Philippines, unfortunately. So yeah, if you're a four-year bachelor's degree holder, then you don't need to submit an IELTS test as well, okay? These are the programs that we have for international students. Um, you can go to our website for more information. However, um, we've listed everything in the website, all the programs that we have on in the college, including the ones that are not available to international students. So baka malito lang kayo, baka mamaya nag-check kayo ng program tapos only to find out na hindi naman pala pwedeng applyan nyo ng mga international student. So to guide you, We've created this one-page list of the complete uh, program available to international students. We, um, the Kanata has a PDF copy of this. So if you want to get a copy, then just ask them. You can actually see here everything in one glance, the uh, tuition fee, how much is the actual tuition per program, the duration which campus offers the particular program and the available intakes. Um, yeah, but uh, if you're choosing a program, please consult with Kanata so they can assist you uh, whether the program you're choosing 
will be beneficial, not just uh, for you career-wise, but also when you're applying for the visa application. Now for the requirements, just submit these documents to the host of this event. Um, it's a very straightforward list, passport, college diploma, transcript, high school and TOR if it's available, then you can also submit that. Application fee of $100 is waived, okay? And then in a nutshell, if you're looking for a college that offers affordable tuition fee, there is IELTS waiver, um, public institution, meaning postgraduate will keep it eligible. Better job opportunity, lower cost of living, and the Northern Lights, perhaps MLZ is your study destination. This actually concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. And yeah, uh, I guess we're proceeding to QA. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Jamie. So uh, I know that a lot of our attendees here are very excited. Um, so, ayun, yung dalawang school natin, si CNC and CNLC are, one, um, are two of the most popular institutions among Filipinos or aspiring um, Filipino international students in Canada. So, I hope that the presentation of Sir Jello and Miss Jamie have answered um, a lot of your questions and have cleared um, your doubts. So, um, if in case that you are now ready to enroll Enroll and you've chosen which school you want to um, to enroll to. Um, let's all listen to Miss Catherine Manasan. She'll just briefly discuss the services um, that Kanata is offering, which includes a school application and visa process, um, so that you will have an idea on what are the most important um, documents as well as requirements for. Um, the process. So um, here goes. Uh, Miss Catherine, good evening. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Miss Christina. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you to all our school representatives tonight, Miss Jamie and Sir Jello. So I will briefly discuss about Kanata Education and the services that we offer. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us tonight on a Friday. So I will be very quick so we can proceed with our question and answer portion. So once again, welcome to Study in Canada webinar with Kanata Education. Let me discuss with you what are the benefits of an international student. So who are these international students? So of course, as an international student, you must always be enrolled at a designated learning institution. And um, you should be making progress towards completing your program. So it will not always be about work, but you should also need to study. And you need to leave Canada once your permit expires and stop studying if you do not meet the requirements. So one thing that attracts international students to come to Canada is that you can work while you study. So during school semesters, you can work either on campus off campus or if your program has a co-op so on campus jobs you don't need to have a work permit but you need to be a full-time student and you hold a valid student permit so off campus jobs you also don't need a work permit but you should have started studying and also enrolled in a program so if you reach canada or you get to canada one month before your program you cannot start working so you need to be enrolled and your classes have started before you can start working off campus and if your program has a co-op then you can also earn because these companies will pay you during your co-op or your internship on-campus jobs are highly dependent on the availability inside the campus Okay, so another, um, yeah, 20 hours per week during school semesters and 40 hours per week during semestral breaks and holiday breaks. So that's the hours allowed for international students to work. Now, postgraduate work permit. So you can stay in Canada after you finish your program. If your program is less than eight months, you're not eligible for postgraduate work permit. But if your program is one year, then you can stay in Canada for another one year and three years postgraduate work permit um, if you finish a two-year program. So let's say, for example, your program or the suitable program for you is only one year. 
and you want to get a three years postgraduate work permit, then what you need to do is apply for another one year program. So you can do a one plus one program that can make you eligible for a three years postgraduate work permit. Okay. So another exciting benefit of an international student in Canada is that you can bring your dependents with you. So these are considered as your dependents, either your spouse or common law partner, and of course, your children. So if you are 18 years old and above and you are not yet married, your parents, your titas and titas, and your grandparents are not considered as your dependents. So you cannot bring them with you. So only this... Um, type of family is what you can consider and bring to Canada. Okay, so what are the documents required to start your application? Of course, you need to have a valid passport, you need to have your acad academic transcripts and diploma, um, an updated CV, and um, we'll send you an application package as well. So what is the process to become an international student? First of all, you need to consult with your counselor. So we are your counselors here and we will assess you and provide you with the right program recommendation. Please remember that applying for the right program recommendation is very critical with your um, study, uh, study permit application to Canada because you have to justify why do you need to take this program and why do you need to study this program in Canada. So it's a very um, important stage is the consultation with your counselor. After that, we will um, send you a list of requirements and you will submit it to us and we will do uh, the submission on your behalf of the school. So if you apply through Kanata Education with our partner schools today, we will be waiving the application fee for you. Once we have done the application, the submission of the application will wait for the letter of acceptance. You'll confirm your slot by paying the deposit confirmation, and then we'll start to gather all your requirements for visa application process. So Kanata Education will provide all the required documents for the visa application. We will also help you with your study plan writing, which everyone is quite um, scared to do. So you don't have to worry. We will help you with your study plan right okay so there are two types of visa application first one is the regular stream or the most preferred option of visa application of our students so pre-pandemic or before this covid thing happens the waiting time runs between six to eight weeks but at this moment the application assessment runs between 10 to 13 weeks so it's usually updated in the website so we highly suggest that you apply to both of these schools or any of these schools present tonight um, nine months before the um, intake. So we are accepting applications for May 2022 and September 2022. So yes, you need to apply as early as today because you know we need to confirm your slot with the school and we need to lodge your visa three months at the very... Uh, maximum uh, before your intake. Okay, so what are the requirements under the regular stream? You need to have a proof of acceptance or letter of acceptance from the school. You need to provide your proof of identity or your IDs, and you need to need to have a proof of financial support. So this proof of financial support is in a form of your show money um, for your financial requirements to Canada. So how much is the required show money? It's one year tuition fee and one year living costs. So this show money must be in your sponsor's bank account. Sponsor is not necessarily required to be in Canada. So they can be anywhere around the world, just as long as they have access to their bank accounts. And they can provide a letter that they will support your stay in Canada and they will be shouldering all the expenses you will spend in Canada, basically. Okay, so we highly suggest that your sponsor is a relative and not a friend. Okay, 
And of course, with a regular stream, you are required to write a letter of explanation or study plan or statement of purpose. And Kanata Education will provide the guidelines how to write the study plan. So you don't have to worry about it. We'll make sure that you have the perfect and a very good study plan before the submission of your visa application. Okay, so once again, for regular stream, you need to have a letter of acceptance, your proof of identity, a proof of financial support, and a letter of explanation. Okay, so another type of visa application stream is the study direct stream. Okay, it's a very straightforward, hassle-free type of apps application because you only need to provide an IELTS score with a minimum band of six. Now, these two schools are waiving the IELTS requirements for Filipinos. So if you're applying through the Study Direct Stream or the SDS, you must submit an IELTS result with a minimum band of six. Okay, and you need to purchase a guaranteed investment certificate of 10,000 Canadian dollars and pay the tuition fee for one year. So you don't need to, to, to do all the hassle of providing bank statements from your sponsor. So all you need to do is um, acquire GIC, pay one year tuition fee, um, submit an IELTS score and write the letter of intent or statement of purpose or the study plan. So once again, this is the study direct stream and um, if you are interested to apply through Kanata Education, we don't collect processing fees. So that is correct. You heard that right. It's not, it's not a scam and it's also not a fake news. So we only collect 10,000 pesos for your visa application and biometrics fee. So this is your security deposit that you are confirmed you will be applying through Kanata Education. So you will use this 10,000 pesos for your visa application and biometrics fee. So technically, you still did not pay us any processing fees. We provide free assessment, unlimited consultation, and of course, free assistance all throughout your application to Canada. Just submit your passport, your CV, academic transcripts, and of course, a security deposit payment. Okay, so thank you guys so much. This is the end of my presentation. You can follow us on all our social media pages. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or our YouTube channel so you'll learn more about study in Canada. So now we'll proceed with our question and answer portion. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Kat. So um, for those students, I hope that the presentation is very clear. Um, this will be the process that you will be going through for school as well as the visa application. So uh, we'll proceed with the um, question and answer portion. O parang Miss Universe lang, no? Question and answer portion. Um, I'll read... Um, couple of questions here on the chat box. So, um, wag po kayong mahiyang mag -ano, magtanong. <laughs> May right med po tayo. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll start with uh, Miss Faye Guerra. She has a question. Um, is it IELTS academic? Um, I believe this is addressed to uh, Miss Jamie. Yes, uh, for all student, students, it's not an international student academic IELTS is required if you're not eligible for the waiver. All right. Um, I will also um, would like to introduce um, my colleague, um, Sir Francis. Um, he's also an education counselor. So um, let's all welcome Sir Francis. Yes. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I am Francis, one of the education counselors here in Canada. So, uh, follow up ko lang dun sa question about IELTS requirements. Yes, for school application, you need to present IELTS academic, but for CNC and NLC, there uh, for, for Filipino students that graduated a bachelor's degree here in the Philippines, you have a, a choice not to submit any IELTS or English proficiency exam. But for visa application, it's either of the uh, academics and what else, Christina, what's the other uh, type of IELTS? Uh, general IELTS. General IELTS and academic is uh, accepted for visa application if you're going for the study direct stream. 
right? Thank you. And um, another question from Miss Evangeline Nasida. May age limit po ba ang international students? So, um, actually, wala. <laughs> Anyone can study. Um, pwede po tayong mag-apply even if you're in your 40s or if in your 50s as long as yung intention natin to study in Canada is um, career or educational progression. Um, our schools, especially with CNC and NLC, will be accepting you. So don't worry po. Okay, uh, next question here, Christina, is... Does CNC and uh, NLC, Northern Lights College, accepts uh, matured students? This type of student uh, uh, who did not finish uh, college or bachelor's degree or did not even finish two years in college and take the old high school curriculum. Do you accept this kind of students, Miss Jane? Yes, we do. We actually have a program for grade 10 graduates in old curriculum. Basically, anyone who finished high school, 18 years old pataas, can apply. Whether they finish college or not. Are they eligible to take the diploma courses or meron lang specific programs for matured students? Uh, I think there's a specific program. Normally, kasi the diploma program namin is, is requiring equivalent of grade 12. In normal cases, yung mga old curriculum, ang kinoconsider na equivalent ng grade 12 is yung first year and second year ng college nila. Okay? Pero pag hindi talaga sila nag-college at all, meron kaming program pa rin for grade 10 graduates. Alright. Uh, what about in CNC, Angela? Um, for about us, yeah, we, we do accept mature students, but... Um, yeah, in terms of the uh, education requirement, we can only accept uh, if they have finished grade 12. So sadly, we cannot accommodate everyone. The minimum requirement for us is uh, at least second year college, regardless if they graduated or not. So, But the age, it doesn't really matter for us as well. All right. Okay, thank you. So um, a question here from Sir Jose. Hi, Sir Jose. <laughs> um, just like with NLC, waived din ba ang application fee ng CNC? So um, I believe yes, as long as you've attended um, today's webinar. Um, ma galante po si Sir Jeno. <laughs> uh -oh. application fee for you. Of course, for Kanata, no problem. <laughs> Um, also, I would like to cut you guys. I want to say hello, everyone, to those who are watching via YouTube. And I have a couple of questions here. Um, how much is the required deposit or payment to get an LOA? So for both CNC and um, NLC, how much is the requirement? Ms. Jamie? Um, for NLC, the initial tuition deposit is 6000 Canadian dollar. That covers the first semester as well. Okay, Sir Jello? For CNC, 6-5. Uh, that's uh, also equivalent for one semester. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. That's all. We can proceed with other questions. <laughs> Yes, I have a question here, Ms. Kat. Uh, when is the best time to apply? So for students that still uh, deciding uh, if they want to pursue their uh, studies in Canada, you need to at least uh, a year uh, before the start of your interested intake and kailangan makapag-start na ng application because these schools actually, especially uh, Northern Lights College, for September 2022 intake, but to start yung application nila this October 1st. But for CNC, I think, uh, for May 2022, uh, May kailan ba mag-start yung open. Yeah, the, the May intake, the portal will open this uh, end of September. End of September. So yep. uh, may, be sure na before September, you already made your decision if you're going to pursue your uh, studies in Canada. And this one is for September 2022 pa. But... Are there any programs still available for May 2022, Miss Jamie, for NLC? There are still programs available for May 2022. However, it's very limited already. Many or most of the program are already full because we opened the admission last June 1st. 
And um, to give you an idea, guys, na rin, <laughs> um, kung gano'n ka, de- ka in demand sa MLC, in, in my experience, normally in five to one week time after namin i-open yung admission, puno na yung majority of the programs. So, if you're asking when to start the application, I'd say as early as now. Especially the application for the college. But for May 2022, meron pa naman. Konti na nga lang. Hindi na lahat ng, available, hindi na lahat ng program available. Okay. So, for NLC, you need to start collecting your documents now and uh, start uh, your application with Kanata so you can... Uh, uh, pwede ba tayo makabal for September 2022? Yes, yes, that's right. That's for next year, but, but for NLC, that uh, because of the demands for international students na gusto magara sa uh, Northern Lights, so kailangan talaga mag-apply as early as now. Christina? Yes, so ayun, dapat prepare tayo guys if ano, gusto natin humabol. And um, Another great question, which is actually related din dun sa dating uh, na-discuss ni Miss Jamie and Sir Jello. So, um, Miss Faye Guerra would like to ask, how long is the processing time once the application is lodged? Uh, let's go with Miss Jamie. Um, to be honest with you, right now, we that our admission team is transitioning. So, medyo nag-drag yung aming um, May 2022 intake but actively working on it naman na. So hopefully by the time na mag-apply kayo ng September 2022, for example, if that's your plan, the original or the target um, turnaround time talaga is two weeks to say maximum of three weeks. We're trying to go back to that for as soon as patapos yung transitioning ng admission team natin. Okay. Uh, here's another question. What is the difference between SDS or yung study direct stream and the regular stream? Actually, both streams can get you a study permit or student visa, but different lang sila ng requirements. For regular stream, you need to pay one semester tuition fee and then you need to have a sponsor. Uh, that sponsor should be a relative So hindi uh, kailangan mapakita natin yung proof yung relationship so you need to submit proof of relationship like birth certificate, marriage certificate and and the likes. But uh, ang kailangan na proof of funds ni sponsor na nakalagay sa bank account niya for at least six months is equivalent to one year tuition fee and one year living cost. For example, uh, sa NLC ang tuition fee I think nasa 12 to 13,000, right? Miss Jamie per year uh 11 plus 10, yeah 11 so 11,000 Canadian dollars for one year tuition fee and then additional pa yan ng 10,000 Canadian dollars for your living cost so your sponsor need to have 21,000 Canadian dollars on her bank account while on SDS yung study direct team you need to pay one year tuition fee kaagad So I know uh, na mention kanina to get LOA you need to pay 5000 or 6500 Canadian dollars but if you're uh, planning to uh, take the study direct stream you need to pay the one whole year tuition fee and you also need to secure a guaranteed investment certificate sa mga banks in Canada so we will give you instruction to get the GIC and you also need to take IELTS So yung score na required is 6.0 uh, either of the two generals or academic ina accept ni IRCC if you're going to apply via study direct stream. Okay. And um another question here is uh, what is the class delivery in NLC is it face to face already or online for the winter and spring 2022 um, I think um, Miss Jamie would agree with me on this um, it's very too early to tell kung ano yung magiging set up for winter and spring 2022 intake um, as different um, restrictions are placed um, Every now and then, depende sa rules na ni Canada 
on how to handle the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So, um, nag advice naman yung schools. They do uh, release um, important notices or ano, um, they normally send email instructions to the existing students or who have already been accepted kung ano yung magiging um, form of delivery ng classes. But uh, for January 2022, um, most likely, ano yung magiging setup nila, Ms. Jamie? Okay. Um, for September 2021 muna tayo, yung, yung pinakamalapit. Okay. Balik na sa on-campus. Originally speaking, on-campus naman talaga. Nagkaroon lang ng online or um, tinatawag na combined. May, may, may on-campus, may online because of the pandemic. Pero pag walang pandemic or prior to that, wala talagang online at all. <laughs> on-campus lahat yon. For September 2021, balik na ng on-campus. And it's very likely that the, the winter intake will be the same. Yun yung target kasi. But like what you said, it's true because we don't know what's going to happen with this pandemic. We don't know it will, if it will drag until you know 2022. So if anything, the policy naman kasi both the delivery of the program and even the travel in Canada constantly change. So we will see. But for the September 2021, balik na so on campus delivery. Winter, we're not sure. But it's likely that it will be on campus then. Do you have any more questions, Christina? Um, okay. I'm just scouring through the chat box. Yes, ito. Uh, can I bring my wife? So for international students who want to bring their dependents in Canada, definitely you can bring your spouse or common law partner. And also you need to, uh, you can also bring your dependents na mga anak. So as long as they're still uh, dependent to you, so 19 to 18 uh, age, and then hindi pa sila tapos ng senior high school, you can bring their, you can bring your child and actually they can study for free in Canada if they want. Thank you. Um, this question from Ms. Nicole Yambao is related to that, um, she asked if will you also assist my dependent if ever. So yes, Kanata do assist um, dependents of our students. However, that's where we will collate um, assistance fee or processing fee. So Kanata's assistance fee is 30,000 pesos for adult dependent. That includes the assistance fee, uh, documentation, and the writing of statement of purpose. Now, it's 20,000 for minor dependents. Okay, but for uh, student applicants, we don't collect processing fee for our students. So our assistance for school application is free for the program recommendation, school recommendation, and also for the visa application. We all do the assistance for free. But before we start our application, you need to settle 10,000 deposit. 10,000 pesos na deposit fee, but this one is consumable. So meaning for your visa fee and biometrics fee, we are uh, covered na siya. So hindi na tayo magbabayad ng 235 Canadian dollars if we're going to apply for your student permit or student visa because covered na siya ng deposit fee na 10,000. But if it if in uh, the middle of the application you canceled or Sir Francis, hindi na po kami tutuloy, that 10,000 pesos is non-refundable. Thank you so much for that, Sir Francis. I have a question for CNC um, lang real quick. So usually the postgraduate diplomas in um, business and then IT and the hotel and tourism industry is around 11,000, I believe. Um, yeah, IT is, uh, sorry, uh, tourism is around 10,000. Tourism is 9,000 per year. Uh, mm -hmm. Human resource is uh, 10,000 per year. But usually I, the other programs, not the postgraduate diplomas, range between how much? Um, average will be around 11,000. 11,000. Yeah. So 11,000. Mm -hmm. And tuition fee usually at um, CNC. And yes. what about the accommodation? Because they missed that part. Um, the yeah. accommodation, how much is the on-campus accommodation per month? On-campus, it's around 1,800 per semester. Uh, no food included. 
1,800 um, per semester. Per sem. Yeah. Wow. Sobrang mm. mura. Uh, parang bed space siya. <laughs> but yeah, it is affordable but there's no food. But for yeah. me, um, I, I still find it more affordable if you go off campus. So that's another yeah. option they can check out. Um, mm-hmm. Kasi mabilis ma po on campus namin eh. Off campus, it's uh, at least 350. Mm-hmm. Off campus is 350 per month. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. With okay. utilities. Um, yes. So I think we will answer this one last question. How is the schedule look like for both um, CNC and NLC? Is it going to be the same as it is in the Philippines? Na sobrang loaded, five days a week nag aral seven to five during the day. So. Uh, want me to answer that, Angelo? <laughs> 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 okay, na iba. Um, yeah, in terms of schedule, uh, no, definitely not. Uh, mas maluwag ang schedule sa uh, Canada. And the good thing about North BC schools is uh, we are really supporting students. We are aware they do work part-time, so uh, flexible. But ang tip ko lang naman for students, fix your schedule with the school first before you finalize your work schedule. Fle- pati naman yung companies, they're very understanding and will adjust to your classes first. Yeah, right. to give you an idea... The total required hours is 15 a week. That's the only required hours that you, you are required to go on campus. The rest, bahala <laughs> kayo. Um, walang pasok ng weekend. And normally, hindi siya everyday din eh. Minsan, playtime, sorry. Lang siya ganun. However, we cannot tell you the actual schedule yet. Kasi parang sa Pilipinas yan. Alam mo lang yung first day of class mo, tapos doon mo malalaman kung kailan talaga yung schedule mo. Ganyan din doon. Pero yung load niya, um, less. Mas less kumpara dito. Kaya yung mga estudyante, kaya talagang mag-work part-time kahit nag-aaral. Kasi 15 hours lang yung dinademand talaga na uh, study. The rest, ikaw. Norm- normally, students namin doon, nag-work sila ng weekend kasi weekend naman, nakabakasyon yung mga Canadian. Kasi nag-work ng weekend doon. I know because we know because Jello and I <laughs> work for the college. Hindi hindi mo sila ma, matatagpuan ang college yung mga staff. Hindi mo sila matatagpuan ng weekend kasi walang kaso. Hmm. So uh, weekend game of work weekdays focus on studying. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, I think we can take this last question. Uh, meron pa bang available slot for May 2022 sa NLC for post-degree diploma in business administration. Oh, lahat, lahat ng post-degree program namin, as early as June 7, <laughs> we opened the admission ng June 1. I think June 5 pa lang, or June 4. Puno na yung na. So this is why, guys, I highly <laughs> suggest that you start your application right now. And the slots yes. September 2022 with NLC will open this coming October 1st. So you need to submit your documents with us as early as possible because we, we still need to do the checking. We still need to um, discuss about your program and how we'll go with your application. So I highly suggest you talk to your counselors and book an appointment with us so we can start the process of your application. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Kasi kailangan... um, I think that's it for us, Sir Francis, Miss Christina. Um, yes, yeah. I'm... Yeah, Christina. Yes, Sir Francis. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I think um, most of the questions that's left on the chat box are uh, more on personal questions then. So it really uh, varies on the situation. A student, um, don't worry because if you will uh, set an appointment, which the link was provided at the chat box, uh, we will get in touch with you and we will do a one-on-one assessment. All right, so um, you can drop your contact information here as well. All right. Okay, so thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much to our school representatives, Sir Angelo and Miss Jamie, and to all our counselors, Sir Francis and Miss Christina. Thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you guys next. And we hope we'll get your documents soon and we'll start with your application to study in Canada. Have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jamie. Bye, Thanks, guys. Jenna. Thank you. Thanks, thank guys. You. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.